Hello, everyone. Welcome to join today's talk. The topic for today is、uh, mobile DNG workflow on Canon Cool Cam. This workflow is totally different from the other cameras. This is perhaps the best possible DNG workflow in the future.、Uh, it's like that, you know, the Canon Cool Cam has、uh, the best photo stacking technology built inside the camera.、Uh, if you combine the camera and your、uh, Android. Computational platform in your hand, which means it's your cell phone, right? Combine the camera and your cell phone, you can get high imaging quality 360 panorama right from your、uh, mobile phones. You don't have to use PC or Mac anymore. So this is perhaps the best possible DNG workflow in the future, because in this workflow, the photo stacking is also included. It's different from the other cameras. So for the other cameras, you have to do photo stacking、uh, in Photoshop and in some other softwares, which means you have to use a PC or Mac. But in this workflow, the photo stacking is done in the camera. So that is why I say perhaps the best possible DNA workflow in the future.、Uh, okay, before we show you today's outline. I want to give you a brief introduction on the Express DNG8, which is a newly updated shooting feature on the Canon Cool Cam. It is a new mode called Express DNG8. It's quite different from the、uh, DNG8 or the Photo Mode. It's like that. It's the Express DNG8, in my opinion, it gives something new in the area of VR photography because Express DNG8 this feature. Was designed to be the in-camera imaging stacking.、Uh, it is a very simple imaging stacking based on an averaging algorithm. So this is the in-camera imaging stacking on the raw data. So after DNG8,、uh, Express DNG8, you will get a JPEG plus a DNG,、uh, and both the JPEG and DNG are very high quality reduced image, and.、Uh, Because this is the averaging image stacking technology built inside your camera, so it's like you have an in-camera composite long exposure shot by、uh, make the full advantage of the averaging stacking, and also it's like you have an in-camera adjustable ND filter. Yes, that is the basic features of the image stacking.、Uh, The secret, all the secret is in the in-camera averaging stacking. So the Express DNG8 is in-camera averaging photo stacking, but it gives you a JPEG and a DNG high quality, straight out from the camera. So that is the difference from the Express DNG8 compared with the other photo stacking technology. Uh, Express DNG8 mode could be doubled as a composite mode, with composite long exposure time, which we have already mentioned before. And so, for the Express DNG8, not only you can boost the imaging quality, reduce the noise、uh, in the stationary situation, but also you can use Express DNG8 to shoot running water, smoke, clouds, moving clouds, and lights of cars. And you get a simulated long exposure effect, which the running water will be like a silk. The smoke, the cloud will be like a, a water, right? And the light of cars will be dozens of straight lines across the street. It's very beautiful. That's the the slow shutter speed. So、uh, that is a brief introdu introduction about the、uh, Express DNG8, but. In my opinion, Express DNG8 is just the beginning. It opens up a new way of enjoying VR photography, right on your hands in the cell phone. So let's dive deep into the today's agenda.、Uh, the motivation, why? Why I want to talk about the DNG workflow. The second, I will show you some result directly from my mobile phone. I don't use any PC or Mac. All the photos you see today was generated straight out from my mobile mobile phone, Android phone.、And、if you want to achieve the same result as mine, there are some challenges 
behind the mobile DNG workflow on the kernel Kukan. So I will show you the what exactly the challenges are and how to overcome step-by-step -step approach. Uh, we'll give you a live demo to show you the step-by-step. -step. And finally, we have made some summary and make a prediction about the future of the VR photography. Okay, so first, why? Why mobile DNG workflow is very important uh, for the Canon Cool Cam and for the, all the VR cameras. The motivation is that I want to maximize the image quality, and I want to maximize it, the image quality only, only with the mobile platform. I don't want to use PC or Mac because I'm very busy. I'm going to work to the holiday. I'm, I'm, I'm still running, so I don't want to use PC or Mac. But at the same time, I want to maximize the imaging quality. Second, you know, Express TNG8 will give you uh, a JPEG file directly from the image signal processor inside the camera. But I'm not satisfied with the in-camera reproduction. I'm not satisfied with the result. I think it's far from my expectation so it's way below my expectation about the panorama photography next is that this is an area of mobile first everyone have a mobile phone and as the technology involves our cell phone our mobile computational platform involves a lot and now most of the cell phones have very powerful chipset inside the camera. So our cell phones are already powerful enough to make fine-tuning for panorama photos. And of course, since this is a mobile-first era, they, I, I want to get the high-quality image everywhere, anytime, on the go. And as, as we have mentioned before, the Express TNG8 makes in-camera stacking available uh, in, inside the camera and this DNG file will be the best start point and more importantly the post-processing before stitching is very crucial which means you make uh, the fine-tuning on the, the double fisheye image not on the equirectangular panorama I will talk about this later on so that that is the six reasons of why mobile DNG workflow is very important for the Gandalf Cool Cam. Okay, the first one you can see, I want to maximize the imaging quality only with mobile. So single shot in photo mode, this is this is a noisy shot because the sensor is so small, the light is not very good. And so the, the image is noisy and not wow. It's not stunning, right? And in camera DNG8 stacking, this is the uh, Express DNG8. Uh, it will help you reduce the noise. But the in camera uh, photo reproduction, I'm not satisfied with the result. And this is my result by more tuning on a mobile phone. This is a stunning photo. And at the same time, it's not a noisy photo. So this is what I want from the camera and my mobile phone. But this this photo is what the camera reproduced for me. I'm not satisfied. I want to achieve a result like this. And at the same time, if you take a closer look at the image, I have finished the Nadir patch on a mobile phone. And the camera will not, will never help you remove anything. But in the, on a mobile phone, you can remove the the tripod, the shadows, anything you want. So this is what I want. And I don't I don't like these two images. Yes, I'm not satisfied with in-camera reproduction. The in-camera reproduction uh, is excellent at noise reduction, but the uh, the overall result is not stunning. What I want is a stunning result. Okay, and this is an area of mobile first. Everything we designed was designed to be portable, designed to be mobile. The website design, the app design, uh, the hardware, software design. The rules number one is 
portable mobile. So this is an area of mobile first. And as we know, in the Android Q, in the coming Android Q, there will be the desktop version of Android. Why? The, the desktop version of Android is, is already here because the chipset is already powerful enough. The apps are, are good enough. And with the, the development of AI, the algorithm involves a lot. So I call this the new trinity uh, in the mobile, mobile platform. The hardware, software, and algorithm combined and works together to achieve very powerful result. So your cell phone itself is already a very powerful tool for post-production of photo. And that's why we are going to have the desktop version of Android because our hardware chipset is powerful enough to run in a desktop level operating system inside the cell phone. And more importantly, in the future, we even have the software defined chip, which means we can define a chip that this chip was designed to be specifically for uh, specifically for hardware. Uh, there are many custom design chip in the cell phones, which will only running the deep learning or some others, the very difficult job. Right, so the new trinity involves a lot. So we have very powerful computational platform in our hand. And you know, I, 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 we cannot fall asleep when I'm waking, waiting for the tram, or even when I'm sitting on the, the sit down toilet, I want to make post production and achieve high quality images. And we are holding the powerful computational platform. And everywhere, anytime, on the go, in our hands. Yes, and uh, we have already int introduced uh, Express DNG8. So it's like the DNG8 shots with in-camera averaging stacking in raw, in raw format, and it will give you a high quality, the DNG plus the JPEG. And post-processing before stitching is crucial because this is a dual fish eye image directly from the camera. Uh, it's very easy for you to remove the chromatic aberration and increase the sharpness, make some color corrections, and all this post-production will not create any seam lines. So as you have uh, know, if you uh, apply the post-processing on the equirectangular panoramas, the left and the right, we have a very obvious seam line because the post-processing algorithm will not recognize the equirectangular image. Uh, so there will be a seam line. But if you post processing on dual fisheye images, there will be no seam lines. And because the remapping will mess up the post processing, the remapping. If you uh, post processing a re equirectangular image, the remapping of equirectangular will mess up the post processing. For example, uh, for the chromatic aberration uh, here, you can see there is a line, right? A line in this image. But after the remapping, this line might be a band very wide. The software will not treat it as a chromatic aberration. It might be more like a color area. And sometimes the band will be remapped to a line. That's, that's the, the basic the feature of the equirectangular projection. And from the left to the right, there's a seam. So the nonlinear uh, equirectangular remapping will ruin the image distribution. So everything is different. So it's better post-processing your image uh, on the dual fisheye images. And these dual fisheye images are the raw data straight out from the camera. So, so the post-processing on the raw data, which means post-processing on the dual fisheye image before stitching. And the stitching itself will give you lots more difficulties in post-production. And I want to show you, uh, before I show the live demo to you, I want to show you some result only with a mobile phone, okay? And this is one is the, the cruising at, at night on the Yangtze River. This is in shooting photo mode, uh, straight out from the camera, and you can see there's the image is noisy, although I showed as ISO 100, it's 
so noisy. There's noise, right? You can see in the sky and on the people and their face. And this one was shot with Express DNG8. On the Express DNG8, you can see the noise. It, it's uh, suppressed dramatically. But as as we have a uh, uh, talk before, uh, this is running based on the uh, averaging algorithm. So it's like a, a simulated long exposure shot. So the architecture, the highlight, the bridge, the people are blurred because they are moving all around. And if you watch carefully and uh, the detail of the image, this is the one with the uh, Express DNG8. And this is the one with uh, a single shot on the, on the photo mode. It's a huge difference, right? And this one have we mentioned before. This is uh, straight out from the camera. It's uh, the hotel interior shot. It's noisy and not stunning. And this is and now this one is not less noise. There's a, almost a no noise. Before you can see, right? And after. And this is uh, a image with noise dramatically suppressed. And this is the result I want. This is a stunning result. I post processing on my mobile phone and I remove the tripod and everything else. It's before and after, right? So this one is a very good starting point, and this is the a better ending point compared with uh, straight out from the camera. So this is the image after the mobile DNG workflow. Okay, so there are some challenges behind the mobile DNG workflow. If you want to apply this workflow on your Android platform, the number one is. The DNG data transfer via through the Wi-Fi transfer is impossible right now, right? The DNG via Wi-Fi transfer is impossible. Uh, if you open the Google map and connect the Google map with the Wi-Fi connection, you cannot copy the DNG data from the camera to your phone. So it's impossible through the app, through the Wi-Fi. Next, the Google map gave you in QuickCam, the file system, they, they are using a XFAT file system. And this file system is very tricky. It's patent. And for the Android devices, if you want to support the XFAT file system, you have to pay extra money to Microsoft. So most of the Android phone does not support XFAT file system. So which means that although you can connect to your camera through OTG cable, but the cell phone still cannot copy the data from the cell phone from the camera to your cell phone. You have to figure out a way of supporting the XFAT file system. Third one is the after post processing. The uh, normally the XIF data will be lost, and in the Google app there are strict image inspections to make sure that this image was created directly from the QuickCam camera. So you have to cheat on the QuickCam app after the post-production and to make sure that this image is, in fact, straight out from the camera. But in fact, this is a post-production one, right? And uh, <clears throat> the Nadia patch, is Nadia patch possible in a workflow? You know, my images uh, all have the perfect Nadia. Uh, on the mobile platform, I also want to have a perfect Nadir in a workflow. And some people might want to ask, uh, Android, iOS, the bones supported. Uh, my conclusion is that currently only on Android, but in the future, now iOS will also support this workflow. Next one, uh, I will show you step-by-step -step approach on my cell phone. I will make a uh, a screen, live screen for you, and you can see the every detail how I uh, achieve this result. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, before we go to the live demo, I have to show you. You have to make some preparations before uh, you. Uh, that's uh, the live 
live demo. So the first one is preparation. If you want to use the, the mobile DNG workflow, you have to make good preparations. So this is the, the hardware you need. You need an Android phone that support the USB OTG on the go, right? This is the, the Google Pixel phone, Samsung Galaxy S series. And this is, uh, oh yeah, this is a Xiaomi 8. Uh, there are many, many Android phones. As long as it supports the USB OTG, you can use that phone to make post production, right? Uh, second, you have to put the CoCam into the U disk mode, which means that uh, this is uh, the power button that after the CoCam power on, and you double tap on the power button, and then the CoCam app will beep and running in U disk mode so that you can. Uh, connect the camera to the to the cell phone, and the cell phone will recognize the Kukam as a storage device. Third one is that you need an OTG cable and enough battery life because the Kukam will store some battery from the cell phone. And this is a normal uh, OTG cable, and you can find it in a Kukam package. And this is the setup for me. Uh, in the live demo, this is my uh, the cool cam. They have scratches everywhere, <laughs> and this is an uh, OTG cable uh, in the the cool cam box. And this one is uh, Type C OTG. And there is also a micro USB OTG. Uh, in case your cell phone is uh, the different connectors on your cell phone, and this is the charging cable. It also doubles as the, the data transfer cable. So you connect the two cables together, <coughs> and uh, you connect the micro USB to the CoolCam, and you connect the Type-C connector on the OTG cable to the cell phone. And after that, you are done. You are ready to go to the next step. And there are some apps you need to pre-install on your Android devices. Yeah, these apps are the first one is the, the Microsoft XFAT for USB. So if you uh, install this app, you will achieve the XFAT file system support on your Android devices. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this app is, is a paid software. And for some of the cell phones, they have uh, already have XFAT file system support. So in this case, you don't have to buy this software. The next software is a uh, file manage. And the total commander, this is uh, almost the best Android file management app in the market. And this is a free software, Total Commander. It's a, a very good file management software. And the post, for the post-processing, uh, I recommend the Photoshop Express because this is the only software that will retain all the active data from the original images. <coughs> Next is uh, the CoolCam app on your cell phone because the CoolCam app will be the standalone feature. And there's Touch Retouch and Edit 360. This software, that, this is the software for the active format support. And this is file transfer and rename software. PS Photoshop Express is the post processing DNG and will retain all the active data. The Kuga map in this workflow will be a stitcher, only stitcher. And the touch return will be the Nadir patch software. And the grid software written by the Yoshi Hirota, it's called the Edit 360. It will help you manually leveling the panorama on your cell phone. So if you have this software work together, you finally will achieve the mobile DNG workflow. And uh, not all the software are free software. Uh, the first one on the Microsoft uh, XFAT file system support, you will need a uh, $5 because uh, this, this patent, patent the, XF, uh, the XFAT file system is patent. The Touch Retouch is a great software which uh, sells at only $2. And uh, the Edit 360 is uh, $5.99. Uh, they're not very expensive, but if you want to 
achieve the best result, these are the software you got to install in your cell phone, which you will see the real power in my live demo. Okay, next next up we are going to show you the live demo. Hello everyone, I'm recording this live demo for you to show how to use the mobile DNG workflow uh, with your mobile phone and the Kano Cool Cam. Uh, I won't do this because uh, the Cool Cam just updated with Express DNG 8, which means the camera will help you to make photo stacking inside the camera and out output a high quality DNG files, which is very suitable to make post processing on the mobile platform, which we carry with with us every day, anytime, any anywhere. So the first uh, first step, I'm I'm going to open up the Kukam camera. Long press the on off button, and you will hear the sound, right? And after a few seconds, uh, you can turn the Kukam camera into the U disk mode, which in, on a mobile phone uh, you can connect with the internal storage of the camera. And now uh, I will open up the Microsoft Active uh, connect the USB device. So there's no uh, USB device at the moment. The double tap. See that? Uh, connecting the USB device, uh, which means that the cell phone has found the, the kind of cam through the undergo cable. The cable, uh, the cables are in your in your the cam box. Uh, you can find it. And now I uh, in the in this now I'm in the the Microsoft. I mean the Microsoft Active uh, uh, NTFS USB app. Open the app and click on mount. And uh, now the the Kukam camera is mounted into the Android operating system uh, through this app because most Android devices they, they don't support XFAT, XFAT format. So by doing this, connecting with this app, uh, you can have the support for, for the XFAT or NTFS. Okay. And uh, once mounted, we open up the Tool Commander, and uh, in the main storage, we can find the Microsoft uh, XFAT storage. And open up this. Now we can get into the Kukam camera. In the photo folder, uh, we copy some DNG files. And one, two, three. Take this for example. And long press. Uh, co copy to clipboard and in tool commander I have a bookmark uh, which in the bookmark I have added some folders that I will go back and forth frequently so that I don't have to uh, go step by step I can directly switch to the folder I want so I in my cell phone I create a folder called Kukam DNG to save the DNG files, the transfer from the uh, camera to the cell phone. So in this area, a long press on any of the files and paste here. Now we can see it's very fast. Uh, moving the DNG files into my cell phone. Right, so now we have finished the data transfer from the cool cam to the cell phone. Uh, so now you can uh, disconnect the Kukam cool camera. If you don't, if you do not uh, disconnect, uh, your cell phone will, will charge the Kukam cool through the OTG connector. And in this case, I will uh, disconnect. Okay. In case I will save a lot of battery. Next, uh, we can go to the. Let's choose one of the DNG file and show you how to post processing in the Android mobile phone. Uh, for example, let's choose um, choose this one. 
and open complete action use the Photoshop Express now we have opened this and we can choose another one it's like this one this one right that's that's great image and we can also choose this one it's also great mm, we can also choose this one okay uh, this is so make sure that you have uh, close the Photoshop Express or you will not update with your uh, new DNG file so let's choose uh, another one and for example this one uh, this one okay uh, this is a very good picture uh, from the Kukam camera uh, in this case you can see with the help of uh, Express DNG8 you have a simulated long time exposure effect uh, in the raw data and you can see the, the noise is is reduced dramatically so that you can now we can fine tuning this image uh, in Photoshop Express the the Photoshop post processing is just like you were doing in the Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom because uh, you click on this in the correction in the correction link menu you can see the uh, tune you can have exposure compensation contrast highlight shadows whites black temperature tint vibrant saturation and all the way to the left clarity sharpening reduce noise reduce color noise the, all the stuff are the same with the Adobe Camera Raw so uh, we remember that in the Adobe Camera Raw we have a, a sequence of fine-tuning the temperature first and the fine-tuning the exposure contrast and the highlight so let's make a classic post-processing just like we're doing in the Adobe Camera Raw first we tuning the temperature 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 uh, lower down a little uh, increase a little bit or we can add some warmer tone to the to the street at night that's more realistic and and some tint right we can add a little tint to the some the purple uh, to make the light more vivid and uh, next go to the exposure um, this is a, this is an underexposed image in fact you know, we can turn up the uh, uh, exposure a little bit right like this and now you can see some more detail in the sky and there's n no noise uh, next up oh, we use the reduce some contrast to have more potential in the next highlight in the shadow tuning uh, suppress the highlight so you can recover the the highlight right and you know in the shadow area we have too much too much detail in the shadow so the result will look um, a little bit too flat so in the shadow we, we suppress the shadows to make it more add more black and in the white we leave it there and in the black we turn down the black okay and the, the result the final result we have on total we can add some contrast to make the image more vivid and I can see there's too many yellow in the in the photo so in the vibrance and the saturation I always uh, tend to decrease the saturation by the same time adding vibrance so you can make the image more vivid at the same time not oversaturated so that is vivid in the saturation now we can see the before and after effect right it's going to be a huge difference and after that in the final step uh, we can add some more clarity you know in the KUKAM mm, it's a 4k camera to make the photo more sharp you can use clarity add some clarity to the image to make it more vivid and sharp a little bit 
uh, watch out with the light you can see and you can also add some dehaze because in the night night sh uh, shot uh, in, the, in the far side we usually have some haze you can use some dehaze to make it look more clear and sharp and once we have done it compare before and after we have a huge difference right now i think i am uh, i am a tuning the tint i think i'm quite satisfied with the result at this moment and bring back the situation a little bit and the fibers yes and you can see the the before and after right uh, a huge difference next up yeah you can you can export to the save to gallery now you, the image has been saved your photo has been saved to the gallery so we have done all the post processing on the cell phone and we can also choose the JPEG quality. I always choose maximum quality to get the best possible shot. Next, back to the Total Commander. Uh, you know we have already at the Photoshop Express folder uh, in in the Total Commander. So we can go to the Photoshop Express. And now this one is the fine-tuning image from the cell phone. And OK, and long press. Cut to clipboard and go to the QMDNG folder. And uh, we first we copy the image to this folder because you can see the file name is quite different from the standard file name. So we need to rename to get the best possible to to make the. So I have to let the, the Cookham app later on to recognize this is an image created by the Cookham. So in fact, we are cheating the <laughs> software. Uh, click on rename and click on paste. Now we have this image and now this time cut clipboard and go to the Cookham folder. Usually it's in the candle slash Cookham slash download and slash this is your cookam camera and my cookam serial number is 758 that is in yours uh, is definitely different from mine you can choose your own folder go to this folder and uh, paste here so in the end you can see this image this image we have just added this one right this one okay there are some others uh, I have did with the same approach uh, which I will show you later on next up uh, let's go to the because I have uh, copied the JPEG file into the Cookham app folder so next we open the Cookham app we should find the image in the folder you can see if if not the the better close the app and open that again and refresh the, the app will refresh the folder and now you can see this one this image is the new one right and we go to this file and you can see the result is pretty cool it's result is pretty cool it's much better it's definitely much better than the 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 original one but be careful is that now the horizontal line the leveling is not correct but never mind we can correct the horizontal line later on now we just share to the gallery in a 360 photo format you can see it's not a, a perfect leveling because the express png8 does not have uh, the IMU data built inside the file, but the, 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 the team said they will correct this problem in the future. Now click on done. Okay, and open the album in the gallery. You can see the, in the cookham folder we have this image. Just 
In this case, we use Cookham app as a standalone stitcher on mobile platform. Okay, next, let's click on share because in my slide, I've shown you to, to install this app. It's called Edit360, uh, which will help you to make perfect leveling at post-production. Uh, now in the gallery, we have uh, this, this camera, this, this image. And we share to the, uh, once you have installed the uh, Edit360, you have an option of a uh, name convert. Click on the convert and click on the normal, which means leveling normally. Leveling, uh, leveling manually. Click on OK. And with some fine tuning, you can correct the you can correct the horizontal line by yourself until it is perfect, right? Okay. Now the image will look more stunning, like compared with the original one. And you can see the app have some uh, leading lines to help you to make decision whether it is perfectly level. Okay. Now always in the middle, always to put the the best part of the image in the middle, the best direction. Okay. Now it should be perfect. And this app, you can have a PNG output or the JPEG output. In this case, I choose the 100% quality uh, JPEG output. Click on Save, and it's done. And in the next folder uh, called Edit360, now you have this image. It's very beautiful compared with the the on, on with uh, the normal version, right? And next, uh, if you want to fix something uh, in the post, you can share again to in the files to the touch retouch, and interactively, you know, you can correct anything you don't want. You can also, because this one was shot handheld, so you don't have to move, remove the people. <coughs> but uh, in the but in the in the sky, there are some flares that you can use touch retouch, like an object removal. And you can easily remove that artifacts, right? And touch retouch is a very good software that removes the, any artifacts you don't want. Uh, this is a very good software. You can try on your own. Also, is uh, some quick repair. It just works like magic, right? And and in this case, if you don't like the, the lens flares, you can remove that with some click. And you can also make an idea patch, right? Oops, sorry. And once you have done it, uh, I re highly recommend. Oh yeah, I remember the touch retouch can even remove this white line with ease. Click on line removal. Boom! Right? It's it's like magic, right? So this this camera, this software, it works like magic. And click on export. Uh, usually, I will modify original because it saved me a lot of time and. Settings, I can use the, the max, the max uh, quality and modify original, right? And we go back to the uh, to the folder and you can see now this is the final image we want. The next step, we can share this image to Facebook and share with our friends. Okay, and this is uh, the step-by-step -step workflow. Uh, next, uh, I can show you. I think you have already know the, the workflow. Next, I can show you some of the, the earlier result I have tried with the, the app. Click on the Google map and uh, click 
Click on this. You can see some earlier result. This one. Nope. So if you have ever post-processed the image with some other software like Snapseed or Adobe Lightroom or Fully, anything you want, although the QuickTime app will find the image, but they will not stitch for you because the QuickTime app have very strict, strict image uh, identification to make sure that every data in the file are there. So the Photoshop Express is currently the only app that could handle this post-processing. And the Snapseed Lightroom will uh, destroy the active information, which the Google Map will not recognize. I can see some other stuff. This one is uh, uh, the hotel interior shot. And uh, this is after the Photoshop uh, Express, this, the image quality got improved dramatically. And in the touch retouch, you can remove the, the tripod on the ground to make it the perfect, to make it the perfect, right? And some other in this image, also uh, fine tuning with uh, Photoshop Express and uh, input this image. Okay, uh, some other, some more, some more uh, examples, right? And, and in this case, the QuickTime app works like a standalone stitcher, okay? So that's all for the mobile workflow. Okay, uh, after the live demo, uh, we are approaching to the end of today's talk. Finally, I'll give you some summary and uh, the prediction for the future. First summary, right? Uh, as you can see for, from the live demo, the mobile platform is ready. They are very powerful in the mobile computational platform. And uh, as you can see, the workflow is quite complicated because you have jumped back and forth between different apps. Uh, the workflow itself is quite complicated, but it is possible. It is possible, right? Because we have already achieved very high imaging quality straight out from our mobile phone. So this workflow works, but this is a little bit complicated. And the result is that the almost the same high imaging quality with PC or Mac, because in Photoshop Express, the, the workflow inside the Photoshop Express is exactly the same as the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom or the Adobe Camera Raw. So that is the the standard Adobe workflow for the post-processing. And Express DNG8 help you to make in-camera photo stacking. So that DNG file from the Express DNG8 is highly recommended in this mobile DNG workflow platform. And for the iOS operating system, it is theoretically possible in the future because all the softwares might be uh, also in the app stores, but I haven't tried on the iOS version. But later on, I hope I can get an Apple device and try the iOS workflow. Uh, some for some of the prediction about the future, right? And uh, today we have what we have today is the in-camera averaging algorithm, and uh, the in-camera average algorithm is very simple in the in the computational algorithm. And the row plus, as, as we know, that the row plus is absent in this section because for the row plus, you have to make a huge amount of computation on PC or Mac. But hopefully, one day, we can finally have in-camera row plus. That will be much better. And uh, this is just a dream for me at this moment. I hope it will be uh, real in the future, but who knows. Next is that if we can have uh, the wireless the wireless DNG transfer, we don't have to use the XFAT file format and the total commander because the wireless DNG transfer will save time and cost. Uh, Post-processing presets pack 
which means that on in the Photoshop Express, you don't have to fine tuning every detail of your photo. Uh, you can uh, make your tuning parameters as preset, just like you did in the Lightroom or the Adobe Camera Raw. So the post processing presets pack are ready for the Photoshop Express. If you like it, I can share my the preset with you. As long as you can uh, work, uh, the, you can master the mobile DNA flow at this moment. And more importantly, in the future, I hope we can have the HDR tone mapping for the advanced mode on Kukam. But this is currently absent on the Kukam because we don't have we don't have standard HDR. And Express TNG8 uh, theoretically extend the dynamic range. But sometimes we do need HDR blending, which means we have to shot at least two shots with different exposure values. Uh, although we have the uh, Express DNG8, the, we ha in some case, cases, we have to shoot in different exposures. And the exposure blending, the HDR tone mapping, uh, is absent on the mobile platform. So. Currently, in my mobile DNG workflow uh, on the cell phone, we can only uh, post-process a single DNG file. And the Express DNG8 uh, has already gives us, giving us a very high quality, higher dynamic range uh, information in the raw data. But in the future, we I hope we can have a more potential in the single DNG or even the tone mapping for the exposure blending between different shots. So that's the, uh, my expectations for the future. And I think sooner or later they will become reality. But who knows? And uh, yes, that's it's quite a long talk today. And thanks for your listening. I hope you can uh, make progress together and uh, explore more possibilities in the area of VR photography and thanks for your time and uh, we can have more questions and answers on, in the comments and hopefully in the future we can have more talks on VR photography. Uh, thanks everybody and that's all for today's talk.